Tamiko Fraser Hines with Black Tree TV. We are live at the 16th annual Screen Actors Guild Award here at the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles. Stay tuned for coverage with all the nominees. Congratulations on your nomination. Thank you very much. How, does it, how did you uh, bring to life uh, a historical man such as Ben Carson? What did you bring to the role? Well, it's what I didn't bring to the role, I think, that made me make my way through it. Because when I had uh, heard of Ben's story, and I'd heard of him, Ben Carson, I knew the name, but I didn't know. I mean, I see this guy as an angel sent from God. So I had to restrain myself from getting emotional at every scene. You know, I have three kids, and all three were, two were emergency C-section, and the last one was just planned C-section. But whenever a loved one is sick and you're waiting in a waiting room and a doctor comes up, if he tells you to jump out a window, you'll do it, you know. And to know that this man deals with repairing children and, and bringing joy to, to parents, or at least hope, um, it's, it's an amazing story, it really is. And um, yeah, I think that's what I, 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 I it, was a, it was a lesson in self-restraint emotionally and focus on the material so that other people can experience the emotion. I thought that uh, Drew and Jessica did a wonderful job. How did you get them to go where they went with those characters? Well, I think it all started out in the first time that I met each of them, and I said that, you know, you're going to look beautiful in parts of this movie, and you're going to look like hell in parts of this movie, and I want to make sure that, you know, you're okay with that, and that this is going to be a lot of work, not only when we're actually shooting, but to get to the starting mark, because, you know, it's a ch it's challenging material, material, and we had to find financiers like HBO who, who would love it as much as we did, and that, that they would be in for the long haul, and not just be attached for six weeks and then drop out and go do something else. Um, so asking them to have that commitment from the beginning, and they said absolutely they would, and then their own process of just, you know, getting into, you know, Drew Barrymore did like four makeup tests over the course of a year before we even started shooting, before we even had financing. Um, and Jessica uh, started singing lessons two years before we started, you know, and, and, and Drew doing the, the, the dialect lessons. So they really, it sounds cliche, but they did their homework and they kept up with it. And um, and then when we were ready to shoot, they brought their A-game every day. Hey, congratulations on the Lifetime Achievement Award. Thank you so much. It's very exciting and very scary. Congratulations on the nomination. It's for the cast, yes? It's for the cast, Yes. Yeah. How do you feel about being here this evening? I'm so flattered. Uh, I borrowed money from my mother 10 years ago to pay for my SAG card. Uh, for a job, and I like I got a job. I've just moved to Hollywood. I got a job. Oh, I need to join the union. It's twelve hundred dollars, and so my mother loaned me some money. I did my job. I got the paycheck, and I was able to pay her back. I was just going to ask you if you paid her back. Yeah, yeah, I paid her back. Hell yeah, I did. Yeah. How do you feel being nominated by your peers? I'm I'm very humbled and very flattered, and uh, I, I never thought something like this would happen. I uh, I'm I'm so happy to be here. I'm as starstruck as anybody else. How do you bring so much violence <laughs> to your artwork? What, what is it about violence that inspires you? Well, it was a war movie. <laughs> yes, yes. Then, but the other movies... Movie that was a kung fu movie. And then another one that was a gangster movie. So, so they should have violence. Exactly. And your cast is nominated. Congratulations. I, uh, Christoph Waltz. What was, what was, he was deliciously evil. How did you bring that out of him? Well, actually, he actually just had a good handle on the character. It was written there on the page, and he came in there, and then he, he got it, and then, boy, in the first reading, in the room, I go, this, this is the guy. This guy gets it right away. You are hysterical. <laughs> Thank you. What, let's, let's, what is it? What, how do you find the comedy in everything that you do? I think it's just uh, a, a natural silliness. You know, I mean, it's, yeah, God gave me a gift of being silly, and willing to share it so there it is what's been your favorite role to play thus far daryl on the office mm -hmm. it's just fun going toe to toe with steve Carell, and you know the love you get from being on that show it's like you everybody's friend so it's really cool you? i'm wonderful we have lee daniels from the award-winning precious director congratulations i'm sorry and you're with i'm with my aunt who also plays tuzzy in the movie she's uh monique's mother and Precious's grandmother. Well, congratulations to you both. You movie? I did. So she's the one that says, um, what does she say? She says, uh, uh, leave that child alone, please. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Let her say her lie. 
What is what has been the most su surprising thing about the response to this film? Um, that it wasn't really a black movie, that it's a universal film. That's been the really the response. I thought I made it for my brothers and my sisters. Hello, Precious is universal. It's for everyone to see. One piece of advice for black actresses that are up and coming in this interesting If you have a dream, no matter who says no, if you have a dream, pursue it. Don't worry about the no's. Look at God. He'll take care of everything else. Thank you. How does it feel being nominated by your peers this evening? Oh, it feels great. It, um, you know, especially now, now that the show is over, and this will be the last time for Monk, but it's good to know that, um, you know, that the actors out there are, you know, still tracking what I'm doing and still appreciating the work. And I, and over the course of about eight years and 124 episodes, you know, I've, I've put a lot of these people, I've, to work, I've, you know, a lot of them have been on the show. Maybe that has something to do with why I'm here. Congratulations on your cast being nominated Thank for Dexter. What do you think it's? What do you think it's about the Dexter that is so attractive? It's a dark series. What is it that attracts so many viewers? You know, it's funny. I'm going to say this because it's the show is about a serial killer, but I think the humanity of the show is attractive to people. We are here with Jesse Tyler Ferguson. Like the Thank up you. In this Thank you. From the widely acclaimed ABC comedy Modern Family. I am a big big fan. Congratulations so and I'm so happy for all of you. What is it like working with that amazing cast? Um, it's it's an, I mean it's a dream come true. I'm a genuine fan of every single one of them. Even the little girl who plays Lily. I mean, I'm obsessed with that with that little girl. I cannot believe I haven't stolen her yet. There's two of them. It's actually twins, and one of them might go missing by the end of the week. Why do you think that fans are are, are re like why is it resonating with fans? I think there's just themes that everyone can relate to. I mean, they're very simple family themes, but I think the writers have done such a great job of infusing with such humor and originality and. Um, I think there's also a character that every single person can relate to. What is it about Mad Men and that, that lifestyle and that, that era that is so attractive to viewers? It's the drinking and the smoking and the carrying on, you know? It's and, the, and, the naughty, and the naughty stuff. And the naughty stuff. But you know, it's also, everyone looks at it and they think it's all so sleek and glamorous and everything. But you realize that, you know, especially in the beginning of the 60s and the early 50s, there's so much racism, there was so much anti-Semitism, there was so much sexism, there was so much homophobia, and it was allowed. You know, and we think, like, how many years has it been? 40? Look how much has changed. We're still battling each one of those issues, you know, but still so much has changed. And so we need to get, a, I think we have a little, a little more to go to get to the place where we got to be, but it's interesting that, you know, so much has changed in 40 years. Well, I'm a new face. I'm the new president, Screen Actors. Congratulations. So that's that's one thing. Uh, I think there'll be probably some mention of how effective last night was the telethon that George Clooney uh, uh, was responsible for. I'm sure they'll, it will filter through the program. It's such an important event, what's happening in Haiti, and a good example of how uh, celebrities, actors, and stars can really help and get out there and get behind something like this. I think that will change it. Uh, other than that, we'll see. I've always thought this was a an interesting show, actors giving awards to actors, to their peers, and it always moves pretty crisply. I think it's good. Quick question for Black Tree. Uh, it's rumored that you're playing Jesse Owens. What are you going to bring to that role? Uh, honesty. I feel like uh, a lot of actors nowadays don't know how to keep it real. You know what I mean? Um, I think we're in a generation now where we have a lot of young people that don't know our history. And I think Jesse Owens gave us history that deserves to be told. And Haiti, what are your thoughts? How would you encourage our viewers to support what's going on in Haiti? Slow down. It's a long process. They, uh, an entire country just fell apart. Being from New Orleans, the most important thing about Haiti is not to forget what happened 12 months from now. Because they have to rebuild schools, they have to rebuild churches, they have to rebuild all their government infrastructure. Don't forget that 12 months from now.